When a relationship ends, you call it a breakup. Or you say the marriage went to pieces. The um, image, the, the image is that of broken porcelain. And, uh, and uh, when there still is a relationship, but there's a conflict, there are um, flying saucers and, and, uh, and cups and plates in the air, heading for an inevitable crash. And the, the use of porcelain is very, very symbolic. Uh, because, for some reason, when you're in a relationship, it's very important to eat together. And again, we can think of the history of the Christian Church, where, where uh, Jesus Christ, uh, according to the Bible, according to the Bible, <laughs> according to the Bible, Jesus Christ never had sex with his disciples. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, according to the Bible, had never sex with his disciples. It doesn't say. It doesn't say so. It doesn't say that Jesus Christ had had sex with his disciples. It doesn't say that. Uh, it doesn't say that Jesus Christ never had sex, but it doesn't say that he had sex. And um, to the authorities of the learnings of the Christian Church, uh, whether Catholic or Protestant, they, they, they would be, no one would say anything like that. That would be, it would be, it would be like a very, very, you know, a very, very uh, secty sect, very sexy sect uh, <laughs> somewhere who would say, Jesus had sex with his disciples, it's okay. No, no, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus had never sex with his disciples. <laughs> Charles Manson. <laughs> Charles Manson had had sex with his disciples. Um, Jesus Christ had, had didn't have sex with his disciples. They both had beards. They both had beards. Um, <laughs> but Jesus Christ never had sex with his disciples. They both had long hair. But Jesus Christ had, had didn't have had sex with his disciples, like Charles Manson. And uh, and actually, uh, Jesus Christ couldn't have taken Charles Manson as a model because. Uh, because the powers, the powers of, of Jesus Christ, he could do many things. He could, uh, he could float. Uh, um, he could float on his feet. Um, uh, he could turn water into wine, uh, uh, like good wine. I mean, I, 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 you know, I, I, uh, I, uh, I would be happy. I would be happy if Jesus Christ would come to North America right now. And, and turn that awful, awful water that they insist you have to drink in the restaurants and you know, into some like, proper, you know, nice water. Uh, it's, uh, all this chlorine you get in these restaurants, don't drink that water. You know, they're trying to drink you as, they're trying to get you to drink as much as, you know, as soon as you had a little water, they fill it up. <laughs> <laughs> they fill it up, they fill it up. Um, and, 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 and you're not asking for water, you get water. You get water right away. And it's, it seems like, you know, it's, it seems like, you know, it's, it's like the worst kind of capitalism that you're at work, or even if you sit in a restaurant, you're at work drinking water. <laughs> and there's so much chlorine. I mean, if you have European taste buds and you haven't destroyed them by being here for weeks or, or months, you know, you taste the chlorine. I can't, it can't, it, uh, chlorine is poison, it's poison, it's not good, it's not good for you. Don't drink that water. <laughs> Jesus Christ, he didn't have sex with his disciples. Oh, he could do many things. Uh, uh, but he, I don't think he could have sort of. Ima I don't think he could have imagined that. You know, I don't think he could have imagined that there would be that such a person like Charles Manson would arrive. I mean, I think. I think. I mean, then he would have done something about it. No. Yeah, it's sort of, it's sort of looking a bit like him, and beard, long hair. Maybe, maybe Jesus Christ didn't know about North America you know, or South America. Maybe Jesus Christ sort of. Everything that's happened in the new world, you know, is not Jesus Christ or God's responsibility because it didn't exist back then. It wasn't, it wasn't discovered. Yeah. Miracles can only happen in, in Europe and Asia. 
Africa also. Africa, yeah. Africa was very close. Okay. Yeah. Palestine was a part. It's a part of Africa. So it's sort of you know sort of it's, you know, sort of, you know, it's, it's closer to Africa than Sweden. That's for sure. <laughs> so Jesus Christ, Christ, he didn't have didn't have sex with his disciples. That's for sure. Um, we can establish that. So the Last Supper. Because of that, the Last Supper is the most intimate moment in the history of the Christian Church. Um, and thus, uh, when, when couples, men and women, and, and you know, gays and lesbians, have conflict, uh, and they're using porcelain, uh, it's even more symbolic because, uh, because of, you know, the Last Supper was such an important thing in the history of, of, uh, of intimacy uh, in the Christian Church. <laughs> and the, the Holy Grail, remains a, a magical and mysterious thing. The Holy Grail, where you know, they, they, they drank the wine, hopefully good wine. It's the Last Supper. Jesus! Jesus, let, let's, have, let's have the good one tonight. It's, I mean, it's a, <laughs> You know, I mean, it's... What? You know, you're going tomorrow. I don't know, I've been saving it for so long. I'm not sure. Ah, oh, Jesus, come on. Come on. Come on. Um, uh, I'm not going to do the Chateau Neuf de Pape joke here. Uh, well, it's at least one sophisticated person. <laughs> That's the other thing they do in, in restaurants. Like, they, they try to make you drink Canadian wine. It's absurd. I mean, Californian wine is absurd. I mean, Canadian wine? Well, this French wine. That's, that's fine. It was, a good, it was a good enough for Jesus. <laughs> mm, now, if, if the Holy Grail would have been a coffee mug, no one, no one would have, uh, no one would have uh, bothered looking for it. Uh, it, it I mean, um, the, 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 the famous, the famous film director, the one, uh, the one from California, <laughs> Steven Spielberg. Uh, I mean, he, w he wouldn't have made a film about you know, someone looking for a coffee mug. Um, if, the, if the Holy Grail would have been a, a coffee mug uh, made of porcelain, no one would have bothered looking for it because everyone would have seen it. it had gone to pieces. Because porcelain can break, but it's, it's very hygienic and it's, it's uh, much more hygienic. Like this, this paper cups and it goes cold. Ugh, take out coffee. Take out coffee. I mean, <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> it was genuine. It was genuine. Oh. It was genuine. Um, I felt a bit. It was a bit slow in the first. In the first, I had to act. I had to act in the first. I had to act all the through. All the through the first act, I had to act. Because I didn't want to perform, I, you know, I felt a little bit de depressed. Um, now, now I'm sort of, um, after my the seventh cup of coffee, I'm sort of getting into it. <laughs> but thanks, I highly appreciate it, and you know, don't hold yourself back. But I, I don't think it was, maybe a little bit. <laughs> So, porcelain, that's hygienic. It's much more hygienic than those takeout cups. And, uh, and, uh, and that's good. It's good that it's hygienic because you use it for food. And, uh, and for the same reason, um, it's also the ideal material for making toilets. <laughs> and uh, actually, a lot of porcelain companies make both kinds of products. But they always keep the catalogs separate. <laughs> in um, in Sweden, in South Sweden, where where I grew up, there's um, a company specializing in sanitary porcelain called Ife, I F and then an O with those two dots on top of it, and um, and. Uh, Ifa is so big that in Brumala, which uh, where Ifa has its uh, sanitary porcelain head office uh, at the at the uh, town hall square, 
In Brumala, the town hall square, the sanitary postman, head office, is bigger than the town hall. So one could say, and this is of course interesting to think about, like when, when there are debates and, and the Americans are trying to elect the president, um, as well as they can. <laughs> One could say that in Brumala, uh, as we would say in the South, Brumala, <laughs> that's basically why I, I'm performing in English, because I have this southern Swedish accent. And if I were trying to perform in, in Swedish, I, I mean, I, I, I would feel washing away my accent. Acting there, yeah. Would, would um, <clears throat> Washing my, washing away my acting. <laughs> okay, triple double acting. <laughs> um, would feel like um, it would feel to me like it would feel to you, you know, trying to speak like the queen, even if it's your queen. Um, I don't still, I don't, I don't understand why you keep the queen. You have enough identity problems, as it is with the Americans. <laughs> this is not acting. I'm genuinely confused. Where was I? The porcelain. <clears throat> the porcelain. Yeah, someone could say that, that uh, in, in uh, Brumala. Oh yeah, yeah, I was talking about, like, if, if I, if I would have tried to I, I couldn't, I can't. I mean, it would feel so strange for me. It would feel as strange to me washing away my accent as it would to you speaking like the Queen, your Queen. And so that's why I'm um, not performing in my own language, but in English. Also because I'm a very shy person. All the Swedes are very shy. We're shy and depressed. And so it's like, it's nicer, it's nicer to speak English where you can be a little bit jolly. You know, drink a lot of coffee and you're jolly. <laughs> In the United States, the biggest company for sanitary postmen is called American Standard. It's a somewhat enigmatic name. Does it mean American Standard? An American Standard to American customers <coughs> used to American luxury and comfort, in contrast to, let's say, Bangladesh. <laughs> or Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Afghanistan, Afghanistan. Afghanistan. Um, Bangladesh. <laughs> we'll, we'll stick to Bangladesh. Um, um, or does it mean American standard in contrast to American luxury and comfort? This is confusing. But when uh, American Standard started its sister sanitary postman company in Europe, they were wise enough not to call it European Standard. Because what would a European sanitary postman standard be? Albanian, Bulgarian, or Cypriot? Swiss or Slovenian. A film can be European, uh, at least from an American point of view, if it's complicated, confused, experimental, and real, and that can be fine for a film, but it doesn't work for sanitary postmen. <laughs> <clears throat> but the European American standard has found a fabulous solution. They call themselves <laughs> Ideal standard. And that's pure genius. It's the ideal standard to everyone, everywhere, all the time. <laughs> it's just a pity they're in the wrong line of business. Because you can't get ridiculously rich selling sanitary porcelain. Because you can only sell one toilet per person and a wash basin, and possibly a B-day. And 
<laughs> a toilet can last a lifetime. Uh, a sanitary por porcelain can, can uh, be passed on to new generations and still be fully functional. So it's impossible to get ridiculously rich selling sanitary porcelain. In, and it, it cause, cause, uh, oh, I jumped, I jumped, I jumped. I know, I, 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 I know, 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 I know. With sanitary porcelain, you can't increase processor speed. And you, can, you can't add another razor blade. In the 1970s, they tried to add camera. In the 1970s, you could get sanitary porcelain in avocado. And in the 80s, you could get peach. And there was a touch of sophistication with avocado in the 70s and a touch of decadence with peach in the 80s. But in the 90s, people wanted their sanitary porcelain white again. So they could check that it was clean after all the sophistication of the 70s and all the decadence of the 80s. And sophisticated hotels had to change their sanitary porcelain, their sophisticated sanitary porcelain to stay sophisticated. In the 90s, at least in Europe, I know what I'm saying here is not applicable here. In Europe now, we have like a big and small flush. Big and small to save water. You've never seen this here, right? If you see two buttons on a water closet in Europe, that's what's going on there. Small and big flush. And, and uh, this was something then that, that uh, sanitary porcelain very, very smartly managed to to sell to people in the 90s because uh, people in Europe at least in the 90s started to worry about the started to worry about the environment. But those worries about the environment never became worries about flushing things out into it. Um, things would just be okay if we bought a toilet with a small and big flush. A smart move from sanitary porcelain. But we need more of those moves. Um, and, uh, that could, for instance, be uh, uh, some sort of uh, Teflon-like antibacterial coating. That could be like a sales argument for you know, renewing your sanitary porcelain uh, before it's passed on to new generations. Uh, or there could be an auto-cleaning electrical current. Uh, if, if sanitary porcelain wants to make serious money, they have to, they have to think of something. Uh, American standard, like a good, good old American company, uh, how, 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 how's American Standard doing? Uh, does anyone know? Are they in the Fortune 500? I wouldn't think so. Um, you know, Apple, Apple, you know, you, you, just, you, you step on it and then ooh, you throw it away and then buy a new one. You know, Senator Postman, it just stays. I mean, it, what would be a genius would be, of course, making, making toilets of paper. You know, hygienic, you use it once, you throw it away. That would be the American way. I have to confess, I have to confess, even if I'm European, that I never use the small flush. I, I always think of doing it, but, but somehow I always end up pushing the big one. I'm not sure what happens. Um, maybe I'm afraid that the, the small flush is just like not not enough. <laughs> um, or or maybe the big one is just too tempting. And maybe maybe all Europeans aren't uh, maybe no one is using the small flush. <laughs> maybe no European is like has anyone has anyone, has one, anyone investigated this? Like, you know, this is, 
if, if I'm dropping out of performance art, and it seems like I am, because <laughs> there, there, there have been complaints about acting, and that, that's, my, that's my largest fear. And imagine the next time I have to perform, and I'll have this fear of acting. I mean, the last time I performed, this time, someone said acting, and how can I get, how can I get up on that stage? Even if it's like this time, it's a low stage, but you know. <laughs> There's a carpet, it's, you know, I can fall, it's okay. But, <laughs> uh, but if I'm dropping out of performance art, um, I mean, I could always go back to, to do normal conceptual art. Um, although I, I felt there was a development, you know, from conceptual to post-conceptual performative practice. Um, I could always go back. Um, and, you know, once, you know, there will be sort of a uh, neo-neo-conceptual thing uh, at one point, and that I can ride that wave. Um, <laughs> if I'm still alive. Um, um, Otherwise, I mean, I could do a PhD, you know, investigating if people are really using the small flush. And, um, and I think that that is something that you, you could, like, get government sponsorship of. Because, I mean, the government, has, has the government thought about this? No. <laughs> no. And we, we, we know that we have to save water. Um, especially we have to save the good, the good, the good European water. So this is something one could do a PhD on, it strikes me now. Now, let's move on. Um, uh, it seems like we've reached the end of this chapter, can it be true? It went very quick. <laughs> chapter 7. <coughs> 16 different hells. 16 different hells. Why Apple's name is silly. Why Apple's name is silly. And how to know your jobs. And how to know your jobs. Good. You're picking up. Picking up. Very happy. Very happy to hear that once. Oh, if you think about the Garden of Eden. If you think about the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden, uh, it's far away. It, it, it's not in North America. It's, it's in the Middle East, or that's what we presume. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible, for God's sake. Um, if we think of the Garden of Eden and what happened there with Adam, Eve, and the snake, um, isn't it strange that there's no religion against apples? <laughs> Now, if there had been a religion against apples, a company wouldn't call themselves Apple, unless they only wanted to sell to Satanists. We know how, we know how religion, we know how, how important the Christian religion is in North America. You would never be able to, you're able to become the president of the United States being black. And that's very impressive. Uh, even in Europe, we're impressed by that, or maybe especially, I don't know. But it's impressive. It's impressive that it's, you know, that, 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 that could happen. It would be impressive, it would be a woman. Uh, that would be very impressive. It would be impressive, it would be a black woman. It would be impressive, it would be an Asian woman. It would be, it would be, it would be very impressive. It would be um, a woman from the native population of America. This would never happen. Um, they, because they don't care. They think it's a lousy job. Um, I don't think it would. I, I don't know what they think. I don't know what they think. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to speak for the native population of, of uh, the United States. Uh, uh. But it would be impossible, as we speak, and I think it would be impossible for the last ten years at least, to become the president with the United States while claiming that you're an atheist. Atheist, atheist, like a person who, who does not believe in God. I think it's impossible to imagine. But does he really, Obama? I mean, I mean, he's a smart guy. He, he went to what, jail or what? You know, one of the big ones, one of the big ones. Harvard. Harvard, Harvard, with the business schools. 
Um, he studied law at Harvard. He taught he taught law at Harvard. And I mean, a law. I mean, he he didn't. I mean, he didn't. He didn't teach the law of the Bible. Well, no, 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 no. Of course not. Still, he you know goes to church and and it is. Is he serious about this? Is he serious about this? Maybe he thinks he is. Maybe maybe it's false consciousness. I wonder. I wondered Sartre. Sartre, what are you saying about you know? What are you saying about President Obama? He's going to church. I mean, is he serious? Does he ah. serious? No. <laughs> 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 